Hey, young man, you want to make it to, you know about the Bible? You want to make it to the kingdom of heaven? All right, I'm about to show you how we're going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Read. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee. So we all sin, right, Cynthia? What's your, what's your name, young man? Jeremiah, all praise. So, Jeremiah, we all sin against God, right? Read. For there is no man that sinneth not. We all sin. Read. And thou be angry with them. And God was angry with us for sinning. God is angry when we sin. He is extremely angry. And he makes us go through catch hell. That's what's going on right now. Read. And deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy. So how do we read that again? And thou be angry with them. And deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captive. We got carried away captive here, right? How do we get carried away captive here? Sin. I got a question. How do we get carried away captive here? Did we, are, are, are we not POWs here? You know what a POW is? Yes. Are we, are we POWs here? We are, right? Listen to this. I want you to believe in the Bible. I want you to hear this though. Listen to this. Read, read it from again from the top. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. There is no man that sinneth not. Read. And thou be angry with them. God is angry with us when he sins. He put us through this. He put us through slavery because we sinned against God. That's what happened. Our forefathers sinned and he put us in slavery. Forefathers, the man that was before us, the women that was before us. Read. And deliver them to the enemy. So that they carried them away captive. He got delivered to the enemy, right? And carried away captive. This is Solomon saying a prayer to the Most High God because he knew this was going to happen to us. He's saying right now, when they get carried away captive, this is what he's asking God to do for us. Read. Unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Wasn't this, isn't this far or near? You see this? Isn't this far or near right here? Look at, check this out. Isn't this far or near? Get up, get up. Isn't, this, isn't this far in there? Look, look, we got taken all over these different countries. This is the prayer that he's saying right now. When we get taken far in there and being taken captive, read. Yes, if they shall bethink themselves. So how do we bethink ourselves? Right now, God is trying to wake you up right now. We came out here not by circumstance you, you hearing this word right now. It's saying that you shall bethink yourself. You know what bethink means, Jeremiah? If I, you know what, you know what bethink means, Cynthia? To think before. So to remember, we have to remember ourselves because right now we call ourselves black, right? I actually, what's your nationality? What would you say? You would say Hebrew or praise? What you would say? Charles, Charles, England. Native American. Native American. For well, our prayer. So, hey, so you one of the 12 tribes of Israel. If you, you are so called black Hispanic of a Native American, you are one of, the, out of one of these tribes right here. You'll be from a tribe of Gad. You'll be from a tribe of Judah if you consider yourself African American. Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captive. And repent. And repent. We have to repent. That means we have to come back to God's laws. In order to redo something, you had to have it before, right? Right? To redo something, you have to have it before. So we had God's laws, so we have to come back to God's laws in order for us to be saved. Read. And make supplication unto thee in the land. And send up prayers. We got to send up prayers and ask for forgiveness for the things that we have done in our lives. Read. Of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and we have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. 
that's what we got to say. We got to confess right down our sins and say exactly what we did. What we got to do. It's what the Bible says what we must do in order for him to hear our prayers. Read. And so returned unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee towards their land. And we must pray to God towards our land. We have a land. You know what our land is? Give me that. Give me Galatians. Give me that in Galatians. What's it? 426. We have a land. We don't we we lost our land. Because right now, if I said what where do you originate from? What you gonna say? Chicago, somewhere around Indiana, something, you know what I mean? But we have an actual country where we come from. Because you can't just say Africa. Africa is a big, you know, it's over 50 countries in Africa. You can't just say that. Read. This is the book of Galatians. Chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the motherland, which is the mother of us all. Read that again. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. So Jerusalem is above, is free. This is that's the so God chose a special people. He chose a special land. Did you know that? He has special places. God created everything. So if he wants something to be special to him, he has that right, right? Read. Which is the mother of us all. Which is the mother of us all. So Israel is the, is the motherland. That is the motherland. Not Africa. Even though it's a part of Africa, but Israel is the motherland. That's where the Garden of Eden was. Right. So brother, come over here. Let me come talk to me for a second. All right. But no, I got a question. So do you know, so God has requirements of us, right? So you all, you see all of the man, give me number, chapter 15. You see all of the man here, right? We all have these fringes on our on our clothes. You see this? You know why we got these on? You don't know why? You ever seen them before? Read what you got. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So God said, bid them, means to command them, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So we are commanded by God. God gave us a dress code. He wants us to look a particular way. He doesn't want us to look like everybody else. He wants us to be distinguished. So when we see him, that's one of my people, right? If you see an Arab, you see an Arab, you know what they look at. They got one of those things on the head. You know where they're from, right? Us, we look like we look like everybody else, right? We have assimilated. We have our own culture. Did you know that the Native Americans they have fringes on their clothes? Come check this out, Jeremiah. Right, look, just hand it on him. You don't have it on this. Not on this. One. See those fringes right here? Come, come check this out. So they came when they came up when the so-called white man came to this country. This is what they was dressed like at the bottom. See that bottom picture? See those fringes? These are our heritage. These are what the Native Americans was wearing. But guess what? When they came over and conquered them, they took them out of them. They wasn't wearing this no more. They, I don't know what particular group of Indians they are uh, tribe, but these are Indians. You said what? I'm afraid. I said a lot of us mix. I'm mixed with Indian as well. I mean, we, I have Indian in me. I ain't gonna say I'm mixed with Indian because you are what your father is. So what's your father here? So here, here, so-called Native American as well. Okay, I'll pray. So these are. I just wanted to show you about the French that these were wore a long, long time ago. It's been wearing a long, long time. This is part of our culture. So I'm trying to show you your history according to the Bible. So since right now we're going over that God, did you know God has a dress code for us? The dress code is that we must wear fringes at the border of our garment. That's a command. Read. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Read Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. How long was throughout their generation? How long should they have fringes on, Jeremiah? What's throughout that generation? How long do you think that is? Forever. 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 That means 
But as long as they're living, as long as they're having chicks, children, and reproduction, they're supposed to have fringes on their garment. That's our custom. That's why they had, the so-called so Native Americans had those on their garments. Great. And that they put upon the fringe the border, a ribbon of blue. You see that? A fringe and upon the fringe, a blue ribbon. This is thus say of the Lord. We follow in the Bible to the letter. This is what we're supposed to do. Read. And it shall be unto you for a friend. Say what? All praises, did So this is supposed to be on your garments, sis. Read. That ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. These fringes help you remember to do the right thing. God said, if you put these fringes on you, I'm going to help you remember to do the right thing. So that's why we are supposed to wear them. Supposed to wear them also to be able to identify each other. So that they, we have a felt another person that's trying to keep God's law. They're doing it to the best of their ability. Right? That's what we're doing. So we are trying to show you this is part of your culture. So if we don't, so this is an easy commandment, right? It's not that hard to put fringes on your clothes. So did you know that if a woman wear pants, that's a sin? Never. You heard that before? Give me that real fast. Yeah, come back, man. You heard it was? All right, so you got it? So according to the Bible, cross-dressing is not allowed. That's against God's law. But they never told you, say, you go to church. They never told you this in church. Because if you break God's laws, what is that called? A sin, period, point blank, right? That is a sin. Read. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Read that again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So, man, God made women garments and man garments. You are not to wear things that's outside of what God made for you, right? You, if you, if I had a dress on, that would be out of order. Just like if a woman have pants on, that is out of order according, right. to, according to God. Right. And you will be judged for that. That is a sin, that is a heavy sin according to God. Because right. when you put on pants, guess what it does? It put a manly spirit on you. Just like if a man put on a dress, it put a womanly spirit on him. It's not accepted of God. You got, you got that? So these are easy sins. These are the ones that we work on first to be able to show that we, we're trying to get ourselves right with God. Because if we don't, guess what? We're gonna be put to death over something small. And you don't wanna you don't want to to be out of God's grace about something that you could have changed just like that. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth